This is NBC 15 News. Celebrations for Wisconsin's 150th birthday are not slowing down. Today, people get a taste of our military history. That's our lead story tonight. Good evening, I'm Diane Carbonera. Celebrations continue around Wisconsin tonight for the state's 150th birthday. This is the second day of parties. And of course, where there's a party, you can always find our Michael Ogden, who joins us now live from downtown Madison. Michael, it seems like the party just keeps going and going, and there you are. That's, here I am. That's right. This Civil War era band has been playing here most of the afternoon. The concert's going to be wrapping up shortly. But as you know, we had a big match down here downtown yesterday. But things kind of moved downtown to Camp Randall today for a big Civil War live history encampment. Now, what we have are people strode through the camp to uh, sing the soldiers. They slapped, they played, they, uh, they just acted like very tired soldiers. Actually, these men are playing the roles of the men of the 2nd Wisconsin Infantry. Back in 1861, 1,000 men from the 2nd Wisconsin were sent to fight for the Union Army. Only 174 returned. Now, that's who these men are portraying. And because of their valor, these men were treated with a big welcome home. As they were the first regiment back, they really uh, got a great, just a great reception. The governor turned up and everybody, and they were all welcomed on the square. And on the square is where I am this evening. Thousands of people showed up today to listen to this band, the Sesquicentennial Party. Now, there is this concert going on. That's going to wrap up shortly uh, after that. People are really just uh, taking in the day and learning more about Wisconsin's history and uh, getting a better appreciation of where Wisconsin came from. Michael, you would think between all of yesterday's events and today's, there'd be more than enough of a birthday celebration, but it, the party's still going to go on tonight, right? That's right. There's uh, going to be a continued party tonight. First of all, after this concert's over, when the sun goes down, there's a candlelit tour of the encampment down at Camp Randall. That's open to the public. Feel free to walk on through. And then at 8 o'clock tonight at Monona Terrace, just down the road of it, there's a sesquicentennial gala ball. Uh, you do have to dress up for it, and you also have to shell out about $150. All right. Like a good time at all the events. Thanks, yep. Michael. All right. Working for you. This is NBC 15 News. Wisconsin's sequicentennial birthday celebration just keeps on going and going and going. Tonight's high style festivities is our lead story. Good evening, I'm Diane Carbonera. Tonight's sequicentennial birthday event is definitely a sight to see. Women are dressed in hoop skirts and men in frock coats, all for the state's 150th costume gala. The formal ball began at about 8 o'clock tonight at the Monona Terrace. Organizers say tonight's event will be memorable for everyone who went. A band and color guard dressed in period uniforms and gowns took the crowd back in time as they performed. Well, this is the third full day of sequicentennial celebrations around our area. Other events included the governor cutting a giant birthday cake yesterday. And today, people taking time to learn more about the state's military history. And as Michael Ogden reports tonight, Camp Randall was overrun by Union soldiers. It's a very special day for all of us. The 2nd Wisconsin Infantry was welcome home today. Of sorts, it was actually a full reenactment of the infantry's return in 1864. They were the first regiment who left Wisconsin uh, in 1861, fought in the Battle of Bull Run, and at the end of their three-year enlistment, they came home. Historian Lance Hurtigen says 1,000 men left from Camp Randall for the war, but only 174 returned. They were one of the best fighting regiments in the Army. Uh, they were part of the Iron Brigade, and they had the highest percentage of battlefield casualties of any federal regiment. Today, the surviving men relaxed in the shade of Camp Randall's trees. When you normally think of Camp Randall, you think of Big Ten football. But way back in 1861, things were a lot different here. Instead of footballs, men were carrying one of these. The main model was the Springfield Model 1861 rifle, which was a 58 caliber rifle, muzzle loaded. Private Foss, and that's his character's name, says we should all be proud of what our Civil War soldiers did for our state. The call was answered in great numbers by volunteers from Wisconsin. And so even to this day, uh, the Civil War is a seminal event in the history of the state of Wisconsin. Some 70,000 soldiers were stationed at Camp Randall during the Civil War. All the men and women involved in the reenactment believe 
Camp Randall serves as an important reminder of where our state came from and where we're headed. Michael Ogden, NBC 15 News. The state's four-day birthday celebration wraps up tomorrow afternoon with the Madison Boy Choir and Chamber Orchestra. Wisconsin Festival Centennial Celebration is into its second day, and it's still going strong. Good evening, I'm Carol Schubert. Joe Francello is at Camp Randall, where many of those who participated in today's Living History Parade gathered. Rick, where are the reenactors marching today? Well, actually, Carol, they marched right through the center of town, right into Capitol Square. And you can see some of them are trickling back into their base camp. And if you take a look, you can see what kind of an elaborate setup this really is. But the tents here don't tell the whole story. And this project took 500 people to put on, but organizers say it was well worth the effort because it gave people a living history lesson. These marching soldiers hope they're bringing the past one step closer to the future. Every time they don their uniforms, they say they keep veterans' memories alive. you got to keep this tradition going, otherwise it's going to die. The reenactors say as long as the bands play on, they'll have important stories to tell. As they recreate Civil War life, they become living links to the past. It's a way for me to communicate with my great-grandfather and I find out a little bit about his life in a way that I would never uh, find possible in, in any other way. But while the soldiers are learning about their ancestors' lives, they're also teaching, giving onlookers an education they won't find in a textbook. It's a valuable lesson to be learned here. It's about your history, about what other people did for you to make this state and to make this nation. Without our past, we don't really have much of a future. It's from our past that we learn our mistakes, and we don't make them over and over again. Those lessons aren't being lost on you. The country's future says it appreciates the sacrifices of its past. All those men risked their lives for us to save our country, and we should recognize them. Students say the best way they can honor veterans is to preserve their memory. And veterans say that they'd like students to get more chances to learn their war history lessons. They say reenactments like this one are a good start, but they'd like schools to do a better job of teaching history lessons. Cheryl? Any chances that they're going to get a lesson at the reenactment tonight? Well, actually, they have plenty. Actually, a couple more. Right now, there is a concert going on down in Capitol Square, like we said before. But again, one more chance to, to see these people, to see these reenactors, and to learn those history lessons between 8 and 10 o'clock tonight. These soldiers will be holding candlelight vigils and tours of their base camp. Phil, thank you. The Festival Centennial Celebration continues with a huge costume ball at Monona Terrace tonight. Organizers say to expect costumes from throughout Wisconsin's history. Tickets to the ball cost $150 a piece. So we'll take you there live tonight on News 3 at 10. For the big are celebrating the state's 150th birthday with a living history lesson. Today, war recreators march through the middle of town to the Capitol Square. Soldiers say walks like this one tell important stories as they recreate Civil War life. These soldiers become living links to the past. But it's a way for me to communicate with my great grandfather and I'll find out a little bit about his life in a way that I would never uh, find possible in, in any other way. The march was just part of the soldiers' weekend long reenactment. They've also had concerts and demonstrations and given people tours of their home base at Camp Randall Stadium. We'll have another look at that big parade later tonight after sports. Right now, they are dancing the night away in honor of the sesquicentennial. A costume ball is being held on the shores of Lake Monona. Despite the event, tickets cost $150 a piece. And joining us now is dealer co-chair Nancy Nessick. Lovely. Very nice. Tell us uh, what you're dressed in. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. I'm quite excited about my outfit. I'm dressed in 1865, and I... I think I sort of look like Scarlett O'Hara. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see the great fit somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I think these were once great. <laughs> so we were told earlier today that people were going to be wearing costumes from all periods of Wisconsin's 150-year history. Is there been a focus on any one era? I would say that there are a tremendous number of ladies here in hoop shorts. And then the next thing we've seen is the bustle. 
uh, though for me, I don't really need the bustle, so uh, <laughs> that wasn't the issue here. But I would say almost 95% of the women that are here are in costume from one era the, uh, uh, all the way up to a uh, modern day era as well. But we have a lot of people here in the Titanic era. Uh, but a lot of Southern Bells, or Northern Bells, I should say. Mm -hmm. Oh, see, now there was one of my questions answered. Vicky Perry's on here tonight. Was that the governor that I just saw? Yes, the governor was just here. Would you like to speak to him? Well, I was just wondering who was there of, of milk, and he's certainly one of them. Well, we have uh, Governor Thompson here, we have Governor Dreyfus here, and we have Governor Lucy here. This is, after all, the governor's fall. And um, so we're very excited about uh, that. We have a lot of other uh, people from around the state. We have many different corporations that are here that have purchased tables, uh, such as uh, the Marcus Corporation, and we have just regular citizens all, all over the, the state that are here. Is it a noise where all the people that are here? Is it a fundraiser? You've got a lot of big names, a lot of big corporations, and price and tickets. It's actually not a fundraiser. Uh, we uh, did this because we weren't using state funds to, to fund this ball. So that was the reason for the, the price tag that you have. But people are really giving their money for us. We're having a great time. We're learning to do dances that no one's ever done before. <laughs> And it's nice that no one's eating or drinking or dancing. So that's been, been wonderful. Well, so we'll let you get back to the dance card. Then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So I have a second horse, a Madison Parade, just like your great, great grandpa might have watched.